year from RPM Auto Reviews. This is my first ever review and it's going to be on my wife's 2018 Subaru Legacy Limited uh, 2.5 Limited with EyeSight. We'll have a look. We'll start from the outside. It's uh, about a 190, 92 inches long. It's a good mid-sized car. I think the styling is kind of nice, but of course that's subjective to everybody. I think it's got nice curves, nice designs. Good for a family sedan or a business sedan. Uh, we have here the uh, front headlights and fog lights are both LED. On the limited option, the standard lower model does not have it, but this limited model has the option where the lights turn I think up to 15 degrees left or right as you turn with the car to help you see a little bit around the corner as you're as you're driving so that's kind of cool and the design is kind of neat as well um, the lower model I don't think comes with the fog lights either now the limited has the 18 inch rims and the 17 inch are on the on the base model the sport and higher has the um, 18 inch these ones are 225.50s and just a little bit, uh, I think 225.60 on the 17. The side mirrors do have the turn signal light on the outside as well, so that's a nice added feature for others to see you when you're turning left or right. The, um, the car does have the proximity key feature, so it does know, of course, when you're close and when you reach to open the door it will it will uh, unlock the driver's door for you now a cool feature about this car is that when you approach the passenger side it doesn't just unlock the one door like the driver's side does when you approach the, the uh, passenger side you hear the beep it opens both the front and the rear and you can also lock it on this side by just touching that you heard the uh, click and now it's locked and it unlocks both sides so that's kind of cool that it can do that we're on the uh, driver's side it'll only unlock the driver's side door when you come coming in gas caps on the passenger side which is a good thing for safety if you have to fill up the side of the road single exhaust and on this side on the mirror, this little Subaru symbol there, there's actually also a light. So it's a little LED light in there and that actually turns on when you're coming close to the car and it senses the proximity key thing and it lights up giving some light in this area. So I guess if it's dark, it helps you see the handle or something. I don't know if it's really necessary, but I guess it's kind of cool. The trunk can be opened three ways. One is with the, the little button underneath there, the proximity key a fob thing has also uh, just a, an actual button to press and inside the car of course is a button to press from inside the car to unlock it as well it doesn't have one of these motion things or anything like that now the trunk is full of a lot of stuff but it is uh, about 16 cubic feet it's definitely a good size you can fit uh, lots of stuff back here good you know many suitcases and though you can barely see it here let me show you in a second It does have a spare tire in there and that, that sectioned off portions for putting other things like spare oil or whatever. It's got hidden cargo compartment, which I love. I don't like when cars don't have that. It's a good utility feature. Let's start with the back. Now, most cars these days are getting more luxurious and Subaru's uh, no different. They've got leather on here because it is limited it's got soft touch up here it's got the faux wood here i don't think it's real with the satin chrome finish there i like it some don't that's a subjective thing it does have a large bottle uh, space for a bottle uh, holder and a small one so it can put two there and it's relatively spacious it's i won't say it's as big as some can be some other cars i'm sure have a little more headroom than this but overall it's it's a good size Six foot people can sit back here. 
regardless if uh, me, who is five, five feet six inches, is sitting in the driver's seat or somebody taller is sitting there. You can get a six foot person in here. Taller than that, it's going to be tight, um, but most people will, will, will fit in here. And also, you got nice leather seating and a limited option, perforated seating. Let's get in here, you'll see the design. Uh, it's in my position right now, and I've got like, I don't know, eight inches or something. So, again, somebody taller would be less space for them, for both, uh, for the back, if someone's taller than the front. But I think it's adequate and a very good, comfortable size car. We do have vents back here as well for heating and cooling. We have the heated seats for the rear passengers. And there's two USB ports there. So that's cool. A lot of USB ports. And... You know, it's got the little handle things again here. I forget the official name for them. And we have the armrest and cup holders back here. The seats are 60-40 folding, so you can pass larger items through if needed, need to. So it's a, it's a good sized car. Very spacious. Headroom, everything is, you know, it's a good balance. Now here what we have, uh, again... Perforated seating in the front. Uh, these seatings, these seatings are not cooled; they're only heated. On the door, we have, of course, the windows, the usual window buttons, and it does have the memory seat. Uh, so that's nice. So you have to go to the limited though to get the memory seat, unfortunately. And one negative is that the memory seats do not adjust your side mirrors. Some cars have that feature, bad on Subaru for not. But we, me and my wife switch cars a lot, so it's good to have the, uh, we wanted that memory seat as a mandatory feature. So same thing here is the front. In the front is the back seat, so we got the nice leather, soft touch everywhere and leather, just hard down here, hard over there, which is hidden anyway when the door is closed. Let's go inside and start her up. It's a little warm, so we open the windows. So what we got here? Start with the armrest. The armrest comes out more forward than many cars, which was a bonus if you have, if you're shorter and you have shorter arms like my wife. She's five feet tall, so she really likes to rest her arm here when she gets tired driving on longer drives. Short drives, she'll drive with two hands on the steering wheel, but when she gets tired, she likes to rest her arm there, and this being longer is great for that. A lot of junk in there, and it gets, it gets pretty deep. We got a lot of stuff in there, but it gets pretty deep, and I think that a regular bottle of water like that, uh, that standard size of bottle of water would fit in here standing up as well. Okay, same leather seating all around, all the soft touch like we mentioned. Uh, the Limited does have a sunroof, not a panoramic, but a sunroof nonetheless. We got two lights up here and the glass holder, sunglass holder. The mirror has, I think, three settings for different doors if you want to set that up, and it has a compass up here. We're facing east. Glove box is just, you know, standard size. Uh, cup holders are good size cup holders. And again, being positioned here and not over here allows this to be longer. We got an electric brake here. And we have, I, I think this is an assisted brake if you're on a hill for extra, extra support. It's car facing the wrong way, so it can't be, I don't think it's a downhill assist. Okay, the gear shift. It has a manual mode here, but you cannot shift it here. It does have the paddle shifters left and right. In here we have a lot of stuff, but you can see there's 12 volt, an auxiliary, and two USB ports for charging and medium. And it's a good size here. You can fit in uh, some stuff there for sure. And it does close. The wire's not in the way. It does have a eight inch infotainium infotainium system the base comes with a 6.5 the upper models come with an eight inch this one has navigation the lower model does not it does have the um, the android auto and the apple carplay features this is uh, another thing that she shows when you're driving it'll show you the all wheels getting power the navigation is relatively easy to set up and good good quality. 
and it is i believe voice activated for the navigation and for the phone and everything you can do everything by voice so that's cool um and here is lots of options for for setting various things like a bright adjustment of the display driver profiles wi-fi settings usb device automatic playing so you know all these cars now they're so techie savvy and they have lots of uh customizing you can do to the various parts of the car and various features that it has uh, so i like that it's screen to me i like that it's not too big it does have some of these other buttons on the side so they're nice and large easy to to reach and get the buttons down here for the climate control are nice actual buttons so it's nice to have real buttons and then large turn knobs for the dual climate control heated seating for three settings for both sides and again the rear seats have the heated seating as well but no cooling seats fan venting is up here i think there's a good spot for it hazard lights up here on the controls on the steering wheel on the left side we have channel changing option here the source whether it's am fm etc activate your voice up and down volumes hang up and answer phone calls and this side you have your cru adaptive cruise control lane departure and adjustments for your adaptive cruise control distance settings down here you have the heated steering wheel option to turn on and off and down here are buttons for viewing the small uh, inside here is a three and a half inch digital display as well and you can see different features average which radio station you're on compass speed speedometer and in the center down here when you're using adaptive cruise control and lane keep assists all these things pop up here and they flash if you go off and beep and all that kind of stuff so that kind of pops up in there as well so that's kind of cool and you have option for a and b for trips the and we have just a usual analog clusters here for your fuel speedometer engine temperature and rpm so that's nice on the left down here we have the uh, buttons for turning off your traction control blind spot monitoring the lane keep assist and the um the forward collision warning can be turned off as well so these are all there for you to turn on and off thankfully this car does not have that engine start and stop when you come to a full stop at a stop sign somewhere the engine does not cut off i think they're adding it to the newer models with a switch to turn it off luckily this 18 and 19 model don't have that because most people don't like it. it does not really help fuel economy that much from all the other professional reviews i've read so you know and uh, regarding the tech features yes this being the limited with the eyesight the two cameras are up here for the eyesight i think the eyesight is phenomenal and same with other companies who have these type of lane keep assist and the braking and cross traffic alerts some people are like oh i don't need my car to do all that for me i can drive but you know what don't be old school and you know they really are there for you to still drive and be control of your car but it's just as a backup i love them just as a backup more for the wife sometimes she might work a midnight shift and she comes home sleepy so uh, having these as backups is very awesome are they too sensitive um, I'm gonna say they've been a, they've been tuned better and they're not like when I'm driving they'll beep if I really do just a, touch the line or either just a millimeter a couple of uh, half an inch away from touching the line or whether I actually touch the line it does beep so it does help you so I won't think that's too sensitive because if you really were drowsy mind you it goes off for me more than it does for my wife because she's more of a careful driver because she she just doesn't like driving so she's more careful so she's paying attention and she stays in between the lines better than i do because i'm just so you know i've been driving so long i'm just more casual and i let the car drift a little bit here and there just because i'm confident but casual driving so i make it go off more than she does unless i'm really paying attention um and again the braking and everything it, it works pretty good i i think you know it's worth having it luckily in the newer models they've offered it just like other brands are doing now they're offering the eyesight in lower uh lower levels maybe even standard and then 2020 so that's something to look into so and you know as it as everything you know things become an option as you go up and then eventually car manufacturers add the safety things in lower lower models which they're doing now as well so overall you know what it's a very a reasonably spacious and comfy car the leather seating is very comfy 
Uh, this car does have a good reviews from everybody that it uh, handles fine. It doesn't handle very sports car like some car manufacturers. You know, some models could just really be very sporty handling. It's not a sporty handling car. If you want a sporty handling car, first and foremost, this is not for you. But it does definitely handle well and hold its own. But you get the added feature of just a nice, comfortable ride. Not as soft as like a Buick would be, but uh, closer to that side of feel. So it's a very comfortable drive. Uh, so those are the basics that you need to know. If I've missed something, ask me and I'll get you the answer. Um, visibility all around that Subarus are known for is very good visibility all around. Lots of windows. Oh, yes, backup camera. I'm sure if you can see it here. I think it's relatively good quality. I haven't, I've seen a few from testing other cars because I've been, I'm in the model, um, I've been testing different models because I'm in the market for buying a new car. Uh, this is again my wife's. And the camera I think is relatively, very good quality and I like the way this one has the perforated little dotted lines and the one solid as you turn. Some have two squares where one stays still in the square, other one rotates, but that's more annoying. This is a better setup. So it's got a nice backup camera. It does not have full view. Some cars have it. Maybe the newer models have it, but this one does not have the full view around the car. Um, that's it for the interior of the car. I'm going to do a little drive around and do a little report while I'm talking about the performance, fuel economy and all that and, and a test drive. So I'll get back to you that very shortly, guys. Thanks for watching so far.